Welcome to the Author Blur Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Maynard. Today I'm speaking with Amber Boudel. She's written two wonderful books that are in the fantasy genre about two different topics, magic and dragons and werewolves being out and in reality. So follow along with us, listen to our conversation. I think you're going to enjoy it, especially if you enjoy fantasy. This is going to be something that will catch your attention. And on another note, I'd like to say thank you for joining me with all the shows I've done, all the shows I'm going to be doing. I appreciate you sticking with me as I go through and keep improving the show to benefit you and the authors. I know as a three-time published crime thriller author that it is difficult for readers to find the authors themselves and for the authors to get their names out. My goal is to make sure that everybody enjoys the show, enjoys what I'm doing, and they can find authors that appeal to them. So if you have a chance, help me out, give a review, send me an email, let me know how I'm doing. I'd love to hear from you. Or there's also the option of going to authorblurb.com where you can help support the show. Click on the support link and you can just go there and help out however you feel necessary. You can even buy some of my books. That would help too. Always have to pitch that. Now, thank you again. I won't take any more of your time up here. I'll let us get straight to the show. So I'm here with Ander, Amber Boudreau. Oh, I can't even speak right. So I'm here with Amber. She's an author of two books, Dragon Ear and Second Nature. Now, looking at her reviews, reading about her, just the stories seem to be amazing from what I'm reading and seeing about her. But instead of me digging and giving my views, Amber, can you tell people a bit about yourself? and a bit about your books so we can get started. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I've, I've authored two books so far, The Dragoneer and Second Nature. Uh, the Dragoneer came out um, in September of 2020, which was, you know, the best time to have a book come out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Second, Nature, Second Nature just came out at uh, the beginning of February. So that's, that one's been out a couple months. Yeah. Right. Um, um, so, yeah. So I, I'm i a native of uh, actually Northwest Indiana, um, a little town called Hammond, which is probably not that little. Uh, but that's where I grew up. Um, I've lived in Madison, Wisconsin for the past 17 years at some point i'll have to say i'm actually from madison wisconsin but i'm not there yet <laughs> Understand. Um, yeah it's gonna take a while um but i uh yes i have spent some time um in in the midwest basically just grew up in the midwest and haven't left uh but i did study I did study geology at university there in indiana and then uh further on in in uh I went on for a master's degree uh, from University of Toledo in Ohio, uh, and then before we before I ended up in Wisconsin. So um, I know you're in Virginia. I've never actually made it that far east. So well, I know the school you went to in Toledo very well. Oh yeah, I can, I can tell you there's a Dunkin' Donuts right on the um, campus that's quite popular. That I used to go get coffee before I went to work when I lived in Toledo. Oh, um, so, but that's excellent. <laughs> I spent many years in Toledo, so I know the city very well. Oh, so, great. Yeah, I yeah. grew up and was born and raised in Ohio. So, yeah, it was Toledo's a nice town, or at least it used to be years ago. Uh, so, same. I will say same because it's, it has been years since I've been back. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. But, yeah, I definitely I, – I remember not only it having a Dunkin, not only having a Dunkin' Donuts in town, but also having a Krispy Kreme in town, and I always <laughs> felt like they were like competing. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, um, uh, definitely, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, and then and then uh, that's as far as east, as far east as I ever made it, and then I I ended up back here in in Madison, Wisconsin. But so yeah, I've got this background in geology, which I've uh, parlayed into uh, writing 
uh, young adult fantasy and and adult fan- urban fantasy books. So, so how, that's how so I'm using you, my degree. And I see. Did you implement the geology or geology into your stories, or is it just no effect mm-hmm. on your stories whatsoever? Absolutely. I, I, I would say that I, I definitely did it concerning the dragon ear for sure. There's uh there's some mention of rocks. Uh, there's definitely some mention of rocks. So there it actually um, it, the setting for the dragon ear is takes place in South Central or Southern Wisconsin. So I I, I do kind of go into uh, the geology of the area a little bit. I have I have my protagonist in that book Moira um, actually visiting the largest state park in wisconsin which happens to be devil's lake so um i I do have her going there and uh looking for rocks um as pertaining to the plot in that of that story uh she uh, yeah she's looking for some igneous rocks and i was like okay well igneous rocks in wisconsin let's see what we can (laughs) what we can find um i'm a big fan of uh devil's lake is a beautiful place because they have these um is they have these preserved ripple marks in these in the Baraboo quartzite, um, just to just to like totally nerd out on rocks for a second. <laughs> these beautiful, beautiful Baraboo quartzite, which is it would, they have these. If you hike along the um, along the edge there of of Devil's Lake, you'll see the preserved ripple marks. And just to be a nerd there for a second, they really are very nice. So, um, and then um, and then for second nature, I would think probably less less. Um, in depth on rocks and rocks type and just more maybe land formations and we're in the foothills of the San de Cristo San de Cristo mountain areas of New Mexico so um, a little bit that second nature takes place in uh, a little bit different spot than than the dragon ear so definitely outside of Wisconsin all right so let's start with dragon ear then mm-hmm. can you tell me a bit about it so it's a young adult is my understanding that right it's a young adult fantasy it involves magic i think in the reviews i saw somebody mention something about a dragon so can you go into this and let me know and let everyone else know a bit about at least the dragon ear oh sure happy to um yeah so the dragon ear um follows 15 year old moira uh noble uh, around uh she's my my main character and my protagonist and she lives in south central wisconsin and she's had some some issues where she was um, homeschooled for a bit and she has some issues that she deal- deals with in terms of anxiety stemming from uh, sort of the sudden loss of her, the sudden loss of her father. Uh, Moira is, is an orphan. She, she, her, her mom is out of the picture. Her dad is dead. Uh, she lives with her aunt um, who is a very busy, uh, th- very busy seeing to her as sort of a single parent in, in Moira's life. And so she's dealing with all of this and she is actually working on a project for her um, environmental class or for, or for a project for high school class. And she's out when she uh, when she discovers this cave and inside this cave, there is this creature and this creature turns out to be a dragon. Um, moving forward through the book, you realize that they actually have a uh, Moira actually has a connection to this dragon. Um, who, in my mind, is a fantastic beast and an innately magical being. So uh, as we move through the book, you find out that Moira was bitten by the dragon and as uh, as a consequence now has also has the ability to do magic in a sense. So, right. um, so she yeah. got her magic from the dragon then or? Yes, from being from being bitten by um, the dragon who she names who she names Zephyr. So uh, Zephyr is uh, starts off very small in the book. So it's not you think oh somebody got bit by a dragon that sounds that sounds bad, <laughs> <You're> right? <funny. laughs> like especially that considering the size considering the size of the dragon. I'm like well don't worry it was very small. <laughs> it was very small when he bit her. Um, but he does he does grow uh, quite rapidly. Uh, and but yes so it's not not so bad being bit by the small dragon. But yeah he does get bigger. Um, at one point, she's like, "Are you gonna have to like bite me again?" Because no, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So she's so they uh, so then Zephyr is is growing and ultimately looking for a way to kind of get back where he came from. And Moira is uh, is is trying to help him do that. 
All right. Yeah. So, and with that, is there, so I guess I'm trying to figure out what caused you. So you don't hear too many books about homeschooling or at least involving kids with homeschooling. Right. Usually it's, they're in a high school building. And to me, I find homeschooling interesting. In fact, I'm looking at it as something to do for my son when he gets old enough. So did you choose that? Because I know you say that you're a parent. Do you homeschool your kids? Were you homeschooled? What brought you to use homeschooling as a as a feature of the book? Right, as a uh, as a device. Um, you know, I have nothing. I think everybody sort of became everybody got homeschooled <laughs> <laughs> for the last couple of years, um, whether they wanted to or not. But I feel like there was a little a little element to uh, of that. To everyone's had had that a bit of their life. And um, yeah, and I think when the rubber meets the road, I really just, it, you know, it, it it proved to me that I'm I'm not a teacher. And so <laughs> I really, yeah, to those parents out there who do homeschool their children, I, you're amazing. Um, to those parents out there who don't homeschool their children, you're amazing. <laughs> like, like, I totally understand that you, you know, you're like public school. Yes. Uh, that's actually where I'm at. My, my kids are in school right now. Um, they're, they're at, they're at school. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I think in the book it's, it's Moira just has a, has just, just has these overwhelming anxiety attacks, uh, um, that she just can't deal with, uh, being in school, being in an environment, um, where she might at any moment sort of experience this overwhelming panic so uh, in the book i it, that's sort of a reason for her to um she does leave school for a couple for a couple of years but by the time that she's a freshman she's sort of integrated back into public school and so at the beginning of the book her sophomore year of high school has just started so she's been at school for a year and this is her sophomore year is just starting but i think we see that socially with her like at least in Moira's case, we see where it's like she's had to, uh, she's been around kids that she knows and then had time away from them to be schooled separately and now coming back and seeing socially, it's like, well, we remember you, but how do you fit in sort of sort of thing? And she feels that sort of um, outsider otherness um, um, as a part of her, as a part of her character. So, yeah. I understand. So, Mm -hmm. It shows, I guess it's showing kind of her trying to find her place again. And then when she's going back to school, does she have the magic at that point? Or is she just getting into that? So is she trying to, and with you shaking your head for the people that can't see the video, I'm assuming you're thinking, yes, she has the magic before she goes back to the public school. So with that, I guess I have to wonder Is she also trying to figure out, besides trying to fit back into her group of friends or back with the group of people she knew or find new people, is she also trying to come to grips with the magic? Is it, is she battling two different identities? What would it, what is she looking at there? Yeah, absolutely. Good, good question. Um, I think that she, at that point in the book, I think she, she has the magic, but she doesn't know she has it. Mm. Yes. So I feel like that magic is sort of influencing her, you know, whether, whether or not she knows it already. And then, uh, and then she does, there does, there is a character in the book who becomes a bit, uh, a, a mentor to her and explains to her or helps to explain or discover what is going on. So, that that mentor helps her to realize that she does have these abilities to um to work a spell or and and um use her abilities in certain ways to to help her deal with this being being this uh, uh th- this this dragoneer this squire to this to this dragon so um yeah all right so now second nature is that a continuation of Dragoneer, or is that a standalone book itself? I'm so pleased that you asked that it is not a continuation of the Dragoneer. It is a completely different book. Um, and that uh, second nature in that book, we follow Mavis Corvid. And she is an 
she's an interesting character. She is when we meet when we catch up with her at the very beginning of the book, she um we find out that she has no memory of who she was up until about six months before when she woke up in the hospital and she couldn't walk. So once she had some pressing matters and the pressing matters were you should be able to walk. So she knows this at least. Right. So she's got that to focus on, but she never really, she never really dithers or she never really becomes obsessed with like, Oh, who was I before it was this person? Um, She sort of is, is happy to get up and pick up, her life and to move on and where that has led her is to working in a garage for a um, bit of a curmudgeon but uh, <laughs> um, her boss H uh, and he's he's the mechanic but she strictly is the front of the garage she takes care of paperwork deals with customers and that sort of thing uh, and so um, uh, also in this in this book second nature she werewolves are a thing so uh the werewolves are out so she knows that werewolves exist ever since she came out of her coma or whatever and she learned that they they existed she has uh she wanted to know more she can't quite understand her obsession with it but she is extremely enamored with uh, werewolves and uh not necessarily who is and who isn't, but what werewolves are, what they can do. Um, she wants to know all that she can. And eventually it, it leads to her discovering um, discovering who she, who she was before she lost her memory and why she can't why she can't recover or why she can't recover those memories that she did have or of the person that she used to be. So um and and also the fact that she has a, a second nature as well. Um, she's not a werewolf, but she's something else. So, all right. Yeah. So in second nature, then the werewolves are they a malicious group of people? Are they a? Obviously, it sounds like they're. You said they're out in the open, so people are aware of them. Is it like a secondary culture? What is it? in your book that the werewolves are being considered or is it just they're walking around like everyone else and it's no big deal except for they have a little more fur than they they have fur where everyone has hair and skin right right so werewolves are um they're out they've only been out about the about a year uh when the when our story picks up and uh they walk around just like everybody else. And that's actually, uh, I make some reference in the book to websites that have developed, that have popped up that make a, make a killing on, on outing people suspected as being werewolves. Um, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's sort of the thing that's still sort of frowned upon. Um, when people don't really know how to take it in the society. They're still, they're still reeling. There's still there's still question of whether there should be a registry for the werewolf for the werewolves that are out there. Um, uh, on another, um, what Mavis finds out is that the uh, the werewolves, the uh, the head of the werewolves in this case, mm-hmm. the old wolf, has gone missing uh, since that year. Basically, the werewolves revealed themselves, and then the elf, the old wolf went missing, and so. Um, Mavis has to figure out what happened to him and might just figure out what happened to herself in the process. So, uh, so the alpha wolf being the, the alpha of all alphas, the leader of the werewolves basically disappeared for a year and his two sons, uh, in the book have, have sort of barely been hanging on and keeping things together. Um, but, uh, it's been a year and now they sort of want to, one wants to take over and move forward, and the other one doesn't want to see that happen for different reasons. So they each have their each have their reasons and and why um, they should or shouldn't be able to do that. So, uh, but and but and Mavis and Mavis is just sort of sucked into the middle of it all, and she's trying on top of trying to figure out her her own abilities. She's also uh, trying to stop um bad things happening <laughs> with werewolves um but yeah so the werewolves are um some people are out as werewolves some people are not out as werewolves uh mostly yeah it's 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 a weird thing in the society to to uh to 
be walking around and being known as a werewolf. I mean, so uh, there's a character in the book who suspects his teacher might be a werewolf. So Mavis wonders if he won't, if he, you know, if he gets a bad grade, will he, will he out his, will he try to say that his teacher's a werewolf because he doesn't like the grade that he gets or um, things like that. So um, right now it's something that in the book, I think has kind of a negative connotation to it. But okay. but they're also trying to change that in the fact that um, some werewolves, the werewolves in the book um, that are out are usually like have come out as having jobs as paramedics and firemen and um, all these uh, emergency healthcare workers that we um, <laughs> take take for take for granted, actually. So right. Yeah. So now I have to ask, just out of curiosity, you said there's websites that are mentioned in your book. Sure. So do you actually take those websites and have them set up so that people that read your book can start going in and registering other people as werewolves or things like that? Ooh, the deep dive. No, I haven't thought about doing that, Eric. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, it, I can just, barely that's like a connection there. <laughs> that's interesting. You can barely rub a, a website together. Um, <laughs> I can, <laughs> um, I haven't thought about that. No, I'm not sure what we would what we would call that. So, uh, no, no, I haven't thought about that. Sorry. <laughs> well, like I said, just kind of curious since you mentioned it. Sure. It wouldn't be a bad tie in. So, yeah, it's just a, you know, a way of, you know, the internet it can be used for good. And oh yeah, so. it can. There, there are some good stuff out there. I mean, but it can also be used for, you know, yeah. Yes, it can yeah. be. Hmm. So with that, tell me a bit more about, how you started writing these books, what got you into, let's start, um, Dragoneer was your first book, right? Right. So what got you starting to write Dragoneer? Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, as I mentioned, I got the background in geology that doesn't automatically lend itself <laughs> to like. Oh yeah. You always yeah. hear all sorts of authors have that geology background. Obvious. I mean, really, obviously. I mean, yes. This, so yes, I definitely, I definitely came to it later in life. I didn't, I don't have a, I don't have an MFA to my name. I, I studied science, <laughs> um, which was great for writing, you know, articles for uh, publication, but um, right. yeah, but less for writing fantasy. Uh, <laughs> so, um, which, you know, I think is, is part of it. I maybe got a little tired of writing all those stories for, for publication, uh, or at least in the journals. Uh, right. like sort of wanted to uh to branch out and go in a in a different direction um yeah also uh also every right i don't know if every writer probably not probably not every writer can say this but eventually i feel like at some point you're gonna write read a book that you're just like oh i could do better <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then and then and then you sit down and you start writing. You're like, oh, I'm not sure this is better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But say, say you do and you, or you find a story that you really want to tell. And, and in this case, I really wanted to tell Moira's story. Um, I was like, okay, now how do I make this? How do I make this good? <laughs> and then hopefully you find, you find other writers and you help each other. And right. you, um, you find a group and you find a critique group, which is great. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who are not just willing to tell you everything that you're doing wrong, they're willing to tell you what you're doing right. And they're right. like, and they're willing to say, oh, your dialogue is amazing. And you're like, thank you. And you're like, everything else sucks, but your <laughs> dialogue is amazing. <laughs> they're like, thank you. Let me just come back to the dialogue for a second. Um, <laughs> that's great. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's focus on that. Um, no, um, that's great. So now, so now you've got some feedback. Like, all right, well, they like you know they like this, but what else do I need to do? How can I change this? How do I make this better? Um, you know, absolutely. So I think I'm of a I'm of an age where it's like, okay, tell me tell me what to do so I can fix it. So right. um, yeah, uh, and, and and so yeah, you do find you just keep working at it and you keep chipping at it, and then when you're just like totally burned out on one story, you go when you write go 180 degrees the other direction and you're like you know what i like werewolves <laughs> so then you're like ah, let me write about werewolves for a while 
Um, I think I am in a unique position that I did write the dragon ear first and that did come out first. Um, and then second nature did come out. So I think, uh, afterwards, and I didn't write that verse. I think sometimes you find authors who are like, Oh, well, this is actually the third book I wrote and it, and it came out first, but you know, my second book that I wrote came out after it or something like that. But yeah. Well, um, I would say I'm one of those authors. My uh, first book I wrote is actually the second one in the series. Ah. Uh-huh. So it kind of got just because after I finished, I'm like, you know, I don't feel like I started it in the right place. So, yeah, I mean, I'd say I am one of those authors that's done that. Luckily, I learned my lesson from that mistake. Right. So the series that I'm getting ready to start writing now, I have a clear starting point. Yeah. But all right. So what got you into fantasy to write it then? What what was it that made you go, you know, because there's a lot of genres out there. There's sci-fi. There's I mean, I can't count all of them. And if you try to look at all of Amazon's list of genres, I mean, holy criminy. So right. what is it about fantasy that got you into it? Um, I blame my dad. So, um, and he knows, cause I think I like wrote it in the book to him. I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is your fault. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> so, it's good to point it out. Right. Right. I blame my dad. Uh, my, my dad was always a big, uh, a fantasy reader. Um, I didn't think, I don't think I really picked up the genre until, oh man, uh, perf. college. All right. That's cool. Like, like before that, I was I, I was reading other stuff. Um, I still re- I still read other stuff. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I think my dad handed me, or it was like my dad had all the Terry Pratchett books on his shelves, and I was right. like, I was like, why can't I read those? He's like, you can read those. It's fine. But where do you want to start? I'm like, uh, duh, the beginning. Um, <laughs> and he's, which I didn't realize at the time. It's like. Terry Branch is kind of one of those authors you can pick up anywhere, kind of. But right. at the time, I was like, there's like 40 books on your shelves. Just give me the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he, and he gave me like the first four. And he's like, <laughs> here you go. And um, so from my father's lending library, I <laughs> borrowed a bunch of <laughs> fantasy books. Um, uh, I do think it's funny. Uh, uh, at the time when uh, Harry Potter was really big, um a couple of people i was in college i remember when somebody saying um yeah i just you know the kids books and i'm just like i don't know who i can like borrow the kids book from i don't know any kids and i was like yeah because i had to borrow them from my dad because <laughs> <laughs> he had them <laughs> that's um, like he dad um I, so i just i i so yeah i blame my dad um but and then from there it was a springboard into you know um other urban fantasy uh like uh jim butcher um uh and patricia briggs uh some other it's just some other authors that i really enjoyed um aaron um uh ben aronovich i mean uh so <laughs> yeah uh yeah and so i just i really i enjoy that i enjoy the magic is everyday aspect art a part of it it's like in in second nature it's um it's it's like oh werewolves hmm, they're just walking around magic is mundane okay um things like that a lot of uh, jasper fjord as well um uh his books are great um yeah uh, i think that's and i just like i you know if i'm gonna write something i'm probably gonna write that since then i've written other things that i've <laughs> right. also enjoyed but for for now i'm i'm sticking in the in the fantasy world with uh the dragon ear and, and um werewolves so well, that sounds good. So are you going to have a second in each book? Or are you going to have a another standalone? How are you planning on? Because ah. it sounds like you're planning or working on another one. So is I, it a continuation or something completely new? Now, I am absolutely happy to share with you that I'm very close to signing the paperwork for uh, a signing contract for the sequel to The Dragoneer. So, um, nice. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, my publisher read the sequel and and they're like, "Yep, <laughs> like mm-hmm. we would we we want this." And I'm like, "I want you to have it." <laughs> so, um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very excited to see that one. Um, 
there will be a sequel to the Dragoneer. Uh, uh, Second Nature. I'm I'm not sure. I will say that I have written a sequel. Um, it is uh, it is very much in the process of being um, edited. <laughs> All right. And looked over and critiqued by by some trusted fellow writers and critiquers and beta readers. But um, someday I hope to see that one as well. Um, in the meantime, I also have you know write. <laughs> can you call yourself a writer if you don't have like one or two like novels on your laptop just sitting there? Oh, so. I lost between my list of ideas and my half started like three paragraphs in. And I'm like, you know, I lost the mood for this. Oh. I mean, it's because I know I've heard a lot of people talk and, and this is really not much. I don't know if this would entertain readers or not, but I've heard a lot of people talk about the two different ways of writing is either considered a outliner where you list everything, you plan it out, and then you sit down and you follow that outline. Mm -hmm. I, I've tried outlining. Mm -hmm. I had a great story, seven book series, and halfway through the outline, I just hated the story. Oh, I'm like, yeah. So my three books that I've written, I did all what's called a pantser series or a pantser style or what now people are calling discovery writing. Oh, that's better it sounds, than pantsing. It sounds much fancier than pantsing. Doesn't it? So you're not just writing by the seat of your pants, you're discovering as you're writing. As you write. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I know that that's a big thing. So for me, that whole getting it out, hint the reason that, I I'll have the idea of the story in my head, just like it sounds like you do. Then you write it out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, everybody has those. Like I said, that's how I ended up with multiple stories that are three chapters in and you're just like, ah, right. Right. Well, I, I've done, um, have you tried, have you done NaNoWriMo? No, I haven't. I hate to say I've between having two kids now and the oldest is four years old. <sighs> I just, two I don't have much. Two kids under the age of five? Oh, my goodness. What's that? Um, um, two kids under the age of five. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the youngest is not even six months yet. Uh-huh. So she came in in January this year. and uh, Wow, like a nor'easter. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, it was a cold day when she <laughs> came in. January definitely was cold here at that time. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I've. I've done it and uh, a couple times now, and they've both they've both resulted in novels that have like yet to see the light of day. Like they're <laughs> just like they're just there. They're sort of like an iceberg. <laughs> there's there's a lot of it under the surface that just needs work and needs to go over, and I need to add to because it's like that fifty thousand words is definitely a a, a mark. Right. But I always feel like my novels tend to I always depending on the genre should be a little. Be a little longer than that, right? So, well, there yeah. is always those. Usually, like different genres require a whole lot more than other genres where you can have the shorter novels. That's true. So, yeah. And I know sci-fi, sci-fi, and fantasy writers or the readers usually really like a thick or more in-depth story. Right. So I can definitely understand that. So with mm-hmm. those two books that you have sitting there that you're playing with here and there. Do you think either of them are going to see the light of day come out, either traditionally published, self-published, if you get the ambition to say, let's go that route? Are you looking yeah. at that either way? Yeah, uh, honestly, I think, um, yeah, if I ever got, in, got them to a point where I was happy with them, um, and that would include, you know, having had having had other people read them <laughs> right? and had been like, eh. <laughs> like uh, I think you need to go back to the drawing board on this one. Um, I totally am open to critique. Um, happy to hear it. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if I ever got them to a point where I was happy with them and, and thought that, that people might enjoy the story. Um, yeah, I think I could, I would pursue um, traditional publishing or self-publishing um, at some point. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, yeah. Are those books also fantasy, or did you try a different route with those? This is so weird. They're in a different genre. They're not fantasy. Um, okay, wait. Take it back. <laughs> when, 
and say something and go right back. Um, uh, let's take it right back. Yeah, that's, uh, I would say one of them has definitely has a has a time travel, timey wimey um, element, magic, breaking a curse type element to it. But the other one is just like a straight up contemporary YA romance. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> but you're like, it's not and like I'm reading it. I was like, it's not bad. All right. So let me ask this. I do have a curious, now that you mentioned romance. Sure. So like one thing is, is I've read some good books that have female protagonists in them that are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Then it seems like the majority that I come across, (laughs) the female pride tag, ah, the main character, when it's a woman, they try to put a strong element of romance in the, they try to make it like a twilight or a some kind of, oh, she was this and her lover and blah, blah, blah. And you're sitting there going, you know, fantasy just doesn't feel fantasy if you're focusing on romance, at least not to me. Right. Fantasy, sci-fi, romance is not the top unless it's a romantic fantasy. Mm-hmm. But because Which is, the, again, another genre. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But right. it's, but it's to me feels like a lot of female protagonists the they try to make it very romantic where like she's in some kind of relationship or she's just pining over a relationship are your books with that whole sentiment or do is she I understand every books have relationships that I'm not saying that makes no sure. sense but are they heavily focused on her being in a relationship while dealing with everything? Or is she on her own trying to figure it out on either book and building it up? But relationships do develop and grow in all this through any stereotypes or any yeah. genres. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's such a good question. Yeah. I think, and I think what a lot of that that comes down to is genre and the writer knowing their genre. Like, well, I like right. fantasy and I like romance. Am I writing a romantic fantasy? Um, 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 how big, yes, how big of a part of the story do you want the romance to be? And if it's going to be a big part of it, I think you would be like, oh, romantic fantasy. Um, I think in my books, especially uh, with, definitely with In the Dragoneer, there's definitely that s- subplot of a, of, a, of a romance between um, uh, between my main character and, uh, and uh, her her best friend and his brother who happens to be his twin oh. um and so i don't know how many genres we just tripped on that one but um yeah so there is a uh, but it's less uh, less uh, less a, a focus and more of the uh, more of a ancillary uh another subplot storyline that is there to help you carry along through the book not so much front and center but, but you're right. People have relationships. So yes, there's there's an element of that. Um, I believe in it. In uh, it's second nature. It's so funny to read the reviews because people are like, "Oh, I love this character and this character," and I can't. I want to read more because I want to see how they get together. And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, not the not the main focus." <laughs> right. like, but but I can see how uh, I can see how that's a draw. <laughs> um right. however again not the main focus of the book <laughs> so but i absolutely enjoy that storyline and those characters and them um uh, uh being in each other's lives in, in that context uh, of, of of a romantic type relationship and how people would be rooting either for or against something like that to happen and then for me it's the author to sit back and be like I have no obligation to see that actually happen or not happen. Right. So a little, a little bit of that going on as well. But um, I get, I listen, I, I, I hear the reviewers, and I'm like, okay, yes, I know those characters are initially, you know, probably, probably going to get together. But as a writer, now it's my, my job to uh, keep that from happening. <laughs> right. So. Uh, so what can I have come pop up? Like, oh, that's that's a bit of an impediment, isn't it? That's what I think. I mean, the like, oil is going to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's terrible. Terrible. Um, <laughs> these things are going to happen. Um, 
yeah, what's gonna what's gonna happen to keep them from being together? I guess is 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 again maybe not the focus, but it's definitely a, another storyline that could come into it. So yeah, it's I, it's interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, it sounds good. So I don't want to keep you too long. So mm-hmm. we've been talking for about let's say a half hour or so. Sure. So with that being said, people's going to want to find you other than just listening to or watching you here. Where can they okay. find you at? What? Where do you like them to find you? Oh, okay. Well, I you can follow me on Facebook. Um, mm-hmm. I'm one of those authors who doesn't have a separate author page, so I'm just me on Facebook. Um, I also have an Instagram and Twitter. Uh, uh, they're both under at an, an Amber author because we who love alliteration love alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so at an Amber author is on Twitter and at um, and in Instagram. I I do have a website, um, author Amber Uh You can reach out to me there. There's a website listed uh, um, or um, an email address there listed. If you ever want to reach out with questions or comments or concerns, um, uh, you can definitely email me. I love hearing from readers. Obviously, I don't know of any writer who doesn't love hearing from readers. Right. Um, maybe there are some. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> gonna, I'm not sure, but I know maybe George R. R. Martin's tired of hearing for, for readers. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, but I know I still enjoy hearing people back on mine. Like right. you said, not too many authors want to say no, no, don't talk to me, don't. Right. I definitely right. am not in that boat myself. Right. Right. Definitely. So yeah. Um. And yeah, I think those are the best ways to. Um, follow me or get in touch. Sounds perfect. And again, all your information I have in the show notes of the links, along with a profile on authorblurb.com where people can go. Of course, find this podcast. If you're listening to it, you can share it. And then also, if, you, if you're listening, you can find the video feed for it as well. So with that, I do appreciate you being on. I've enjoyed our conversation. And hopefully you let me know when your next books are coming out so we can have it on to talk about it then. Definitely. Thank you, Eric. I would love to come back and talk to you about the Dragoneer, uh, um, the, the sequel to the Dragoneer. Sounds perfect. So with that being said, this is the end of the conversation for everybody else to listen to. I'm going to have you hold on for just a moment and I'm going to end this and then we're going to talk a little afterwards. Thank you again for being here. That was our conversation. Amber was very enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. I'm going to keep this short. Go to authorblurb.com. There you can find where we have all of our streaming services. You can even find the podcast there live to listen to. You can find where you can watch these shows if you're not watching them now. So we are set to, well, I am set to show you what authors are going to appeal to you the best I can. So, as I said at the beginning of the show, remember to go, leave me a note, leave a review, do whatever you feel is appropriate, anything you do to help me improve financially, verbally, I do appreciate it. Thank you, and have a good day.